Some men reach out, you know, say, I'm a man of God. And be like, okay, but which God you serving? Um, mm -hmm. What advice can you give to other Christian women who feel that they can't compare to a lot of the, the images that they see, especially on Instagram? Like, what do you say to those women? What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? They don't know how to follow. Ooh, you want to expound on that, please? Um, <clears throat> actually, they're scared to follow. Um, I think women view submission in a very... What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman. You are a premier pre-engagement coach back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. Today's guest is a believer. She has a passion for fashion. She's a self-love advocate, influencer, and more than uh, 115, something like that, 113,000 uh, followers on, on Instagram. We need to talk about that because I need to get on her level. Um, and she's also a mom. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Elizabeth. How are you doing this evening? Hello, I'm doing great. That was a beautiful introduction. Beautiful. <laughs> That's you. That's me. That's I'm awesome. more than that, but thank you're you. <laughs> yes, you're more than that, of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's just that's just the introduction, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Today, we're going to discuss staying true to God while dating a Christian's journey in a secular world. Love the title. Excited about talking to you about this because as believers, there's so many nuance with today's dating scene. And I want to jump into this because I want to value your time. How do you navigate and balance between maintaining Christian values and the modern dating scene? I think for me, one of the, my first steps personally was I had to make a decision. Um, either I'm going to follow the world or I'm going to follow Christ because I can't do both at the same time. And so once that decision becomes clear, it's easier to, to set those kind of boundaries that are going to ensure that, you know, you don't you don't backpedal and that you don't fall into the ways of the world as easily as if you could, if that line wasn't so clear. I love it. So how did you become the woman you are today? Who influenced you or? Ooh. So many people, um, but I, I'm going to have to give that one to, I'm going to have to give that to in part my mother. And then also there's a lot of women in my family. Um, I have an aunt that uh, she was the one that she looked at me one day and she said, you're going to be the next one that's going to come to the kingdom. You're going to be the next one that's going to be saved because um, I grew up in a Catholic family. And uh, she was the only Christian one at the time. And, you know, and she said that to me and I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. Two weeks later, I was saved. Wow. So that's where my process began. Um, and I had in that time, I, I had start, started to have uh, to shed lots of things. Um, I lost a ton of weight. Right. And that was weight that, you know, was linked to some, you know, some trauma and, and, and some past um, ideals. And uh, I think that that I would say that was back in 2019. And that was when that was when I think uh, the best of Elizabeth started to emerge. Mm, love it. Shout out to team weight loss. Uh, yes. I was, <laughs> congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank I you. I was 280 pounds and now I'm down to 200. So I love it. But you know what the funny thing about that is it also it my weight loss journey was also a journey of getting closer to God because it also showed me things like what it is to, to have self-control mm. and what it is to wait right? To have to go through a process and not have something given to me instantaneously and to actually have to lean on him to, to, to get where I wanted to go because I couldn't have done it by myself. Mm. Amen to that. That's, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good um, connection, a good analogy, you know, because it is a process trying to get the weight off and then even growing in God, even that's a process, you know? Yes. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, do you get a lot of DMs? And if so, how do you know how to navigate through? Like, how do you know it's like, no, 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 yes. Like, who who gets a chance? Oh, man. Um, 
<laughs> yes, there are lots of DMs. Um, after, I think, after a while, it becomes overwhelming. Um, and I'll look through them. And, you know, a lot of that stuff is a lot of secular messages. And those are easy to, to you know, to wean off. Um, but there's also a lot of messages uh, with people thanking me, um, even people saying, you know, I followed you for this reason, but I'm, I'm still here because of this reason. And those always mean a lot to me. Um, I don't I try to, to keep myself in a position where I can still be humble and still have conversations with people. Um, I just I, I tread carefully. I will say that I tread carefully with the conversations that I have with uh with people especially uh people of the opposite sex so yeah I, I hear you have you had uh the like at what point did you realize that you've become like this influencer have have that hit you or have you ever had a situation where someone might have seen you in public or uh like when did the influencer thing really hit you? Did it come after the the subscribers? Because I know Instagram, you get so many more people once you hit a certain number. Or do you just kind of look at yourself as like, I'm just, I'm just Elizabeth Elizabeth? I I think it hit me. It hit me when uh people would message me, friends of mine saying, Oh, I saw you up on the explore page. You were at the explore page. You were at the explore page, and they'll send me like screenshots, and um, I was like, "Wow, why did I even get there?" Like, I I don't know. Um, I I started doing. I actually started doing Christian humor, and that was how my page started to to grow. Um, and uh, yeah, it just I don't know. I don't. I I really can't explain it. Um, mm -hmm. The more videos I did, the more candid I got with my walk. The 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 more I also um, expressed, like you know, even my own uh, femininity and my own ways of um, incorporating that a woman of God doesn't have to look a certain, just have to look a certain way. Um, that that started to help my page grow. But um, but definitely the the people messaging me was like, oh, I see you on the Explorer page. I was like, really? Well, how did I get there? I don't know. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Because I wanted to jump into, like you said, Christian women don't have to look a certain way. I want to jump into the next question. And I want to ask, what advice can you give to other Christian women who feel that they can't compare to a lot of the, the images that they see, especially on Instagram? Like, what do you say to those women? First thing I want them to know is that they were set apart for a reason. Mm -hmm. You were not meant to look like everybody else. <laughs> and if you were, that would be so boring. Mm -hmm. And you serve a God that knows exactly the amount of hair you have on your head. And he made no mistakes when he made you. Um, they, a woman of God does not fit in any one box. And to believe that you do is is also believing that that you serve a God that will put you in a box and he will never do that to you. So women, it doesn't like whatever it is that you look like, if you, you know, are maybe a little bit more voluptuous than 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 others, you know, um, you also have to do what could follow whatever convicts you as well, because what convicts you may not be what convict what convicts me. Um modesty is subjective, right? I mean, obviously we're not going to be out here half naked, you know, but um, there are, I've always said you can have two women in, in the same outfit and it's going to look two different ways on two different women. Uh, modesty is definitely subjective. So just follow what convicts you. Your relationship with God is yours. It doesn't belong to the world. Mm -hmm. So Love that would be my advice. Mm -hmm. Love you. Yeah, because I love the boldness that you have for Christ, which made me in, uh, inbox you because I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is what I'm talking about because I think we need more of these conversations um, outside of the four walls of the church, right? So I think okay. these conversations are needed because sometimes you get the women who ask the question, like, I, I just can't compare to these Instagram models. I, you know. And you don't want to. You don't want to, you know, at the end of the day, pretty women have insecurities too. It's not, I mean, and that's something I would love for people to keep in mind as well. Pretty women have insecurities as well. 
Mm-hmm. And, 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 and life isn't perfect for them either. Mm-hmm. I agree. What are some things that men can do to become better dating prospects? Ooh, what are some th- things that they can do? Like, like, what is it that you see about men that you're like, if he only did this, <laughs> he if would... he could, if he could actually hold a conversation for a good amount of time without making it physical, mm-hmm. making it about making a physical comment, um, that would be that would be one thing. If you can actually, you know, no WYD messages, okay? Like actually speak, you know? Um, Another thing for me that comes to mind that I notice a lot is uh, I see a lot of, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong word, but I see a lot of uh, lukewarmness. Um, sometimes when, uh, some men reach out, you know, say, I'm a man of God and be like, okay, but which God you serving? Um, mm -hmm. so (laughs) that's, that would be another one. Mm -hmm. Um, and to just really don't be afraid to, to, to be yourself because I'm not as, as women, I mean, as me, as a woman, I'm not looking for perfection from anyone. I trust me. I know that my partner is going to fail me and I expect him to fail me because the only one that's not going to fail me is Jesus. You know, I, I look at you and I know that you're going to fall short, be yourself. I have a, a, an amazing sense of humor. Like I, and I would love if I could see that in somebody else, you know, And I feel like sometimes men don't, you know, don't want to kind of let loose uh, too soon because you're trying to be so debonair. And it's like, man, I really want to see you crack a joke, though. Like, I really want to see you be yourself. Those would be the three things that come to mind. Mm, That's good, because I I, I heard on a podcast I was listening to one, one that I is is at great value. It said that some of the men who might not be as smooth or as suave, like those guys might be underdeveloped when it comes to having conversations with women and stuff like that. But that doesn't discount who he is as a person. Mm-hmm. And he he doesn't have, you know, maybe a track record of being with a bunch of women you know because maybe he's been consumed in his career or maybe he was playing a lot of sports and you know just things like that so because sometimes I think I know for men we like to try to keep this image and and all women like different kind of men you mm-hmm. know so you don't always have to be the coolest guy in the in the, in the pack like you say you want to crack a joke and let loose like it's okay yes you know absolutely yeah i want to go a little deeper okay all right (laughs) so this is the bonus round there's no right or wrong answers Mm -hmm. what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships they don't know how to follow Ooh, you want to expound on that please um Actually, they're scared to follow. Um, I think women view submission in a very basic and worldly way. And submission is actually a powerful thing. Um, there, There is submission in a woman's power and a woman gets to decide who she submits to. So when you're scared to submit, it's because you're scared of the decision that you're making in the person. So it's really a vetting problem that you have in the person that you're submitting to. You don't trust this person. Um, as a woman, you, you, you submit to, your, to a man and he is supposed to lead from the front, but it is your job as a woman to cover his back and cover the sides and his blind spots. You as a woman have that power. Um, I don't view submission as something weak, but I do believe that as a woman, you have to be wise about who you decide to submit to. So that's that's one mistake that I feel that women, you know, women make. You know, we're not, we're not, um, we're scared to 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 let somebody lead us. Mm, that's good. 
Yeah, because that's that's a show within itself. I'll, yes. save that. <laughs> I'll save that for another time. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Ooh. My parents got divorced when I was 18. <laughs> okay. Um, my parents taught me how to be a how to be a good partner to my husband or my future husband, not necessarily a good wife. Uh, I mean, a good partner. I come from an immigrant family. My, my, my family immigrated from the Dominican Republic and they came here with nothing mm. and they made a life for themselves here. And they were really good business partners. Um, they were amazing business partners. So I learned a lot about how to function with my partner in that way. You know, um, everybody having their own role. Um, but I can't say that my parents taught me how to, how, they taught me what not to do mm -hmm. if I wanted to be a good wife or, you know, or, or, or experience a good marriage, I will say, because my mother was a, she, she, my mother was great, but, and my father was great, but they just were not great together. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. yeah. So, so you, are you more open to marrying like the entrepreneurial type? Um, I can I can. I, I understand how that functions. Um, when my when my parents um, first came to this country, they they had all kinds of businesses like my, my parents grew. I grew up and, and I bear, I mean, my they, they had an insurance agency. They did um, income tax for people. They had like a multi service. They had a convenience store. They, my, I was I was the kid at the bodega. Mm. I was the kid at the bodega because that's where my parents had, you know, and so they, they taught me hard. They taught me how to, you know, work as a unit, work hard as a unit. Um, mm. And if I can incorporate that along with my Christian values, um, I think, I mean, that's, that's a really good setup for a marriage. Mm. Yeah, I agree. That's beautiful. Which is harder for you to say? Is it a, I apologize B, I need help. C, I love you. Or D, I was wrong. I need help. <laughs> and why is that? I need help. Um, that also goes back to how I grew up. Um, very matriarchal mother who did it all and never asked for help. And I grew up thinking that's what women do. You just put up, you know, buckle up your bootstraps and you just do what has to be done. Um, you don't get to sit back. You don't get to cry. You don't get to uh, you look around. You just have to, you know, be forward facing and you just get it done. And you don't need, you, you know, you don't need a man. You don't need anybody. Um, and I've unlearned a lot of those things, but it is very hard for me to this day to to ask for help. It's not that I don't ask for it. I do um, because I'm also at a place where I can acknowledge, you know, ooh, this is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely it's it's the help. It's the help. Mm -hmm. I, I feel you. I struggle in that area, too. <laughs> God's working on us, okay. Hey, hey man, right? <laughs> Is it easier to love yourself or love someone else? If you would have asked me this 10 years ago, I would have said easier to love somebody else, but mm -hmm. it is easier for me to love myself mm -hmm. because out of the love that I have for myself, right? That came from understanding God's love for me. And now I can overflow and just love on everything. I think I, I am able to better love others because I know how to love myself because I understand how God loves me. Mm -hmm. So has there been a time in your life that, like you said, 10 years ago, when did that switch turn on for you? For you, Do you mind sharing maybe a story or something that you can maybe help someone with? Like when it actually changed for you? Do you remember that time? loving myself more than others yes oh uh, yes absolutely um it was when my daughter was 10 months old around and I was in a, a relationship with her father and it was very toxic and you know very unhealthy and 
Um, I had very uh, low self-esteem and, and he knew that. And, but he had his own demons that he had to, you know, fight through. And um, I, I looked at my daughter and I said, I, how, how embarrassed would I be if I ever had to tell her, like, don't let somebody treat you this way. But I let, you know, grew, she grew up watching me being treated a certain way. Like with what audacity would I tell her, you know, don't let a man do this to you. And then I, I remember looking at myself in the mirror and I said, you know, you don't deserve any of this, but you have to get up and you have to do something. And, and that was a pivotal moment for me. Wow. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Cause you never know who's watching or who's mm-hmm. listening, you know, and through your testimony, right. You never know. Absolutely. Right. So this has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much for your time. Can you let everyone know how they can get in touch with you? Absolutely. So I am on Instagram. It is yo. Soy Ellie, I will um, spell it out because there's a period in there. (laughs) It is Y-O period, S-O-Y-E-L-Y. And I'm also on, uh, I know a lot of people don't don't get on this anymore, but I'm also on Clubhouse. Um, And I host lots of rooms um, on on Clubhouse. You can find me in relationship rooms and you can find me in, um, I have my own room, the Biblical Baddies. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we're, we'll we'll host like uh, we'll host uh, faith based rooms from time to time. So yes. Awesome. Oh, and the man cave. Yes, the man cave, which is it's a Christian room for men um, and women, um, where we talk about the male perspective in a faith based way. So mm-hmm. those that those will be the ways to 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 see me to mm-hmm. interact with me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. So you can connect with Elizabeth on those platforms. I found her on Instagram personally. Um, I, I, I was on Clubhouse. I was heavy on Clubhouse. And then I think maybe right before the pandemic kind of thing, then I kind of just like, eh, mm-hmm. you know, there's was, was a lot going on. So, <laughs> yes. yes. So Brave Hearts, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Someone might need to hear this content. You never know what someone is going through. So share this video with a friend. Share this in your uh, in your group chat. Share this video with your friends in there. That's that's how you know you can get the views and get the conversations going when it's in the group chat. Um, so many people share videos in the group chat. I'm like, I need to be there. Yeah. Anyway, that's another another message yeah. for another time. <laughs> Also, if you're listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Leave a rating and review. And by doing so, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? We gave a free Amazon uh, gift card away a couple months ago. So make sure you do that. This has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. This was this was great. This was amazing. And I love I love what you're doing. I watched some of the videos and I really I love what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, Brave Arts community. Take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.